live from ASAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City, starting off in the 40s, so already exponentially warmer than what we saw yesterday. How warm is it going to get? What is your New Year's Eve forecast going to look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments, but for now, Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is December 31st. Good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve. Yesterday, Sarah Costa tended to the garden for a good hour. Turned out to be a gorgeous day out there. You were actually surprised. You were like, I thought it was going to be so much colder. It was, it was, it warmed up nicely yesterday. I actually took the day to mow my front yard. Yes. Well, the little bit that I have and you know, do some trimming because I have to get everything ready. Mm -hmm. Nice and fresh for the new year. Justin, a lot of people were out taking advantage of the warmer, beautiful temps in the afternoon. It was really nice. And now it's uh, now it's time to party. Where are my party people at? Woo! Right over here. All right, let's calm down. We <laughs> still have, you know, what, like 18 Welcome hours. Welcome to GMSA over there. weekends, yeah. Justin. Oh, I'm my telling you, man. He, like, we need to step it up. Justin's bringing the energy. That's right. It is, uh, it's almost party time. But we're a few hours away. Uh, actually, several. But <laughs> if you're planning to celebrate tonight, here's a look at your forecast. Uh, about 7 or 8 o'clock, we'll see temperatures in the 60s. It'll be actually really comfortable as we... Uh, celebrate if you're celebrating downtown. Uh, 9 to 10 o'clock will be in the 50s. You might want a light jacket if you're going to be out and about, but it's not going to be that cold. And then by the time we ring in the new year, temperatures will be in the 50s. Partly cloudy skies, light and variable winds, uh, pretty close to perfect uh, with fireworks likely going off across town. So just be prepared for that too. Uh, a pretty good looking forecast. Right now we're at 39 degrees here in San Antonio, so temperatures falling a little bit. I think we'll slip into the Upper 30s for a while this morning and then rebound pretty quickly. 35 Rio Medina, 36 Hondo, 39 right now at Stinson. And the weather headlines, well, as uh, we get into New Year's Day, frontal boundary is going to kick up some winds. It doesn't bring any rain, but it does bring cooler conditions and, yes, some gusts up to 25 miles per hour. And then Tuesday, as we head back to work and school, showers, a rumble of thunder, rain, a pretty good bet. We'll talk about that forecast coming up. And... We've got uh, some records that are going to be going down now that we're saying goodbye to 2023. We'll tell you what those records are. And a full look at your seven-day forecast, too, in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, hours after being arrested on suspicion of drunk driving, a San Antonio City Councilman, he says he did not feel intoxicated. District 10 Councilman Mark White spent the night in the Bear County Jail. He's the second District 10 Councilman to be arrested on a DWI charge just in this last year. As Danielle Ibarra tells us, White says he is taking responsibility for his actions. I had a beer. A blood warrant obtained by KSAT shows that's what District 10 Councilman Mark White told an officer after he was pulled over last night. The report says the officer saw White driving on 410 eastbound just before the 281 exit. The officer reports seeing White's car drift back and forth inside his lane and switching lanes without signaling. Records also show White was driving 80 in a 65 mile an hour zone. Once the officer pulled White over, the report says White told the officer he had three beers at three different locations. White also told the officer he was sober. In a search warrant, the officer notes White had a strong odor of alcohol, glossy red eyes, and a staggering balance. White refused a breathalyzer and had his blood drawn. He was released from jail today on a $2,000 bond. In a statement, he says he did not feel intoxicated when he drove home last night. He says, quote, I never get behind the wheel when I feel as if I've had too much to drink. But that isn't the point, end quote. He says nobody should drive even after one drink. White was sworn into office this summer, taking over the seat from Clayton Perry. Almost a year ago to the date, Perry was charged with his own DWI after a hit and run. San Antonio police accused the then councilman of having 14 drinks at a bar before crashing his Jeep Wrangler head on into a Honda Civic before fleeing the scene. Perry pleaded no contest in exchange for one year of deferred adjudication. As for White, he's set to be arraigned next month. That was Danielle Ibarra. 
reporting. We have much more on the councilman and what happened prior in District 10 right now on KSAT.com. Well, look, this is a story we talk about extensively. Inundated border communities and so many border crossings that multiple rail crossings actually had to be closed down last week. Now, buses from Texas, they're continuing to drop off thousands of migrants in major U.S. cities across the country. Last week, 14 buses of migrants from Texas made their way to New York City. NYC Mayor Eric Adams says that it's the highest total reco record recorded since spring of 2022. As Steve Nance explains, some mayors are taking drastic steps to slow the surge. December crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border reached a record monthly high, according to border authorities. Border agents encountered more than 225,000 migrants, overwhelming already stretched resources. This is unacceptable. Our city here in Eagle Pass, we've been getting slammed with two to 3,000 people a day. Senate Bill 4. Since last year, Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott has bussed more than 92,000 migrants to cities across the country, according to his office. Those cities include Chicago, New York, and Denver, all of which are led by Democratic mayors. Now, those mayors say enough is enough. For many uh, months, we were able to keep the visualization of this crisis from hitting our streets, but we have reached a breaking point. All of our cities have reached a point where we are either close to capacity or nearly out of room. We need more federal support uh, to be able to manage this amount of inflow. Uh, it will crush city budgets around the country. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is heading to Eagle Pass, Texas, along the southern border next week to meet with Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Border Patrol, and local officials. And Mexican officials will travel to Washington, D.C. next month to discuss curbing the influx of migrants into the U.S. But lawmakers say Congress needs to get something done beforehand. We are going to have to deal with this, and we cannot deal with it as Republicans or Democrats. We're going to have to deal with it as a Congress, come together and find solutions and get something done. I'm Steve Nannis reporting. In your morning headlines, Special Counsel Jack Smith disputing former President Donald Trump's claim that he should have absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. In a document just filed yesterday, yes, on a Saturday, Smith says Trump's claim, quote, threatens to license presidents to commit crimes to remain in office, end quote. Now, this comes less than two weeks before the immunity issue goes before the U.S. Appeals Court in Washington, D.C. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel's war with Hamas will go on for, quote, many more months. The comment comes after weeks of persistent international calls for a ceasefire. In the same breath, Netanyahu also thanked the Biden administration for continued backing that includes a brand of new approval of an emergency weapon sale. The Biden administration has long agreed if, if Israel were to stop fighting, it would be a victory for the terrorist organization Hamas that continues to fire rockets at Israel. Biden and other top U.S. officials continue urging Israel to avoid any further harm to Palestinian citizens. And since the October 7th attacks on Israel, the Anti-Defamation League, they're reporting a more than 400 percent in anti-Semitism around the country. And in Philadelphia, there's a vandalism case at a mosque where they found spray painting just Friday morning. A description of the suspect given to police in the meantime advocacy groups they're asking for a boost in security and police presence in the neighborhood where the mosque sits the council on american islamic relations they say they have also seen an increase in hate crimes just like anti-semitism that has targeted muslims since the beginning of the israel hamas war a day after Russia unleashed its largest attack in nearly two years of war ukraine struck back with the barrage of drone shellings over the russian border city at least a dozen people there died and more than 100 are hurt. That massive Russian attack leading to Ukraine's counterstrike brought immediate criticism from the UN Security Council. We ask all council members here today to join us in condemning in the strongest terms this abhorrent attack on cities and civilian infrastructure across Ukraine. Senate negotiations on Ukraine aid, which is tied to additional aid to Israel and funds for border security, Continued this week, but there is no sign of a deal in sight. Time now, 6.09, 82 degrees. After the break, a look back at this year's wild animal stories out of Texas, including the fish with teeth. Mm. And everyone talked about at one point this year. I don't know. We, did we talk about this? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. We talked about that. Fish have teeth too, Max. 
Fair. Great. You just great don't see point. a lot of fish smiling out there. No, I also don't see a lot of fish. All right, taking a live, <laughs> live look out at the Alamo City. It is 42 degrees. What will the weather will look like for your New Year's Eve plans? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. All right, we're going to take a quick look back at some of the odd animal stories we've had this year on KSAT.com. We're going to start off with the teethy fish, other known the as, <laughs> as the poor man's lobster. The fish spotted at... H-E-B on... Your H-E-B! What, what? Austin Highway near Warsbach? Harry Warsbach. Yeah. Turn up. <laughs> and it sure did catch a lot of people's attention. I had proposed we buy it and we cook it here and we have it for breakfast. Wild. That was turned down. Uh -oh. Yeah. That's absolutely not. <laughs> or it was a chupacabra or a coyote. Mm. After Manu Ginobili posted a video of a hairless animal, love that, to social media, many people had different opinions. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department later said it was a coyote with mange. Hmm. Of course it was. Of course. <laughs> for more stories like this and all other wild animal stories out of Texas, just look for this article on ksat.com. And as we talk about 2023 in a recap, Justin Horn, you had a fun fact for us. Yes, hottest year on record. Is anyone surprised? Not shocked. I don't think so. Uh, 2023 was brutal, but we are saying goodbye to it. We'll see what 2024 brings. Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully. some cooler weather and some rain. There is rain in the forecast for the first week of 2020. Great. So that we have to look forward to. Let me show you the numbers. And uh, 72.6, that's where we ended up. Uh, you know, we still have today to go, but I don't think that average is going to change much. And you might be thinking, well, that doesn't seem really high. Keep in mind the average temperature factors in lows and highs. So when you consider that back in January of this year, we got down into the teens. This is honestly pretty extraordinary. It was the summer that skewed everything because we had many days where we were 105 plus. Remember that? Yeah, so this is where we end up. You see the list there. 2006 and 1933 come in second place at 72.1. 2022 was third place just last, last year. Uh, if you want to read more about this, we have a QR code there for you. You can scan it. And we have a full article about 2023 and its ridiculous heat. Our forecast today, 9 a.m., 48 degrees. So pretty rapid warm-up once the sun comes up. And then by noontime, 66, we make our way up to 72 for a high Beautiful day. Mostly sunny. We'll get a southerly wind, at least for now. That switches around tomorrow with a cold front. But we'll see great weather again today. We've had quite a stretch here to end at 2023. And we showed this earlier, but if you missed it, here's your New Year's Eve celebrations forecast. 60s, around 7 or 8 o'clock, we'll see comfortable conditions. And then by 9, 10 o'clock, we're in the 50s. You might want a light jacket, but it's not going to be overly cold. And that'll be the case when we ring in the new year. 50s. Uh, winds will be light and variable, which is a good thing because a lot of fireworks will be going off. We don't want a high fire danger. But with that being said, once that front comes through, uh, right before sunrise tomorrow, winds will kick up. So we still got to be careful. And obviously, there's still a drought situation going on here. So, you know, just keep that in mind. We don't want any grass fires or anything like that. But it should, uh, should be great weather uh, as we welcome 2024. Right now, 39 degrees. Dew point is at 32. Northwesterly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Uh, another chilly morning in the wind chill values. There's not a lot of wind, but what wind there is is creating wind chills in the low 30s in places like Bulverde. Feels like 34 right now in Bandera. So, uh, you know, just another uh, chilly morning for sure. Big picture here across the country. It is really pretty quiet. We've got some snow up across the Midwest, a little bit of snow in the Rocky Mountains, and then some rain out west. This is the storm system, by the way, that we're watching. Uh, because this is the one that will actually bring us some rain on Tuesday, and that's what we need. Uh, looks like our rain chances will be pretty good. So let's walk you through the forecast here. Uh, nothing today, uh, but then here comes our front. So it arrives just before sunrise tomorrow with it, some breezy winds. There could be a shower or two east of San Antonio with this front, but I don't think we see anything here. Uh, then partly cloudy skies tomorrow. It's Tuesday, though, when our storm system arrives. starts to bring in a little bit of moisture. So by Tuesday morning, probably still dry. But by midday and into the afternoon, we're getting showers. And I think we could even see a storm or two, a rumble of thunder. Nothing severe, but don't be surprised if you uh, hear some thunder or see a lightning strike. Uh, this is around 5 o'clock, so the Tuesday evening commute could be a little more dicey. Uh, coming home from work, uh, we're all heading back to work on Tuesday. Know that there could be some wet roads. And then as we get into Tuesday night, rain chances actually pick up a little bit, but they're starting to push east. And I think by Wednesday morning, Rain's out of here. How much could we see? 
not a lot. Uh, we're kind of used to this, right? But I think a quarter of an inch, at least it's something uh, with this. And then the higher amounts are going to be off to the east and southeast of us along the Gulf Coast, where they could pick up close to an inch of rain. Beyond that, we have another rain chance on Friday. So a couple of opportunities next week, uh, again, which is a good thing. 2022 and 2023 were extraordinarily dry. 60 on Monday, 52 Tuesday. It'll be chilly uh, with that chance of rain. And then look for 60s Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday, again, we have an opportunity for some showers. Oh, we need the rain. We do. Uh, we need to go back up above average on 2020, in 2024. So here's for open. We are in El Nino, correct? Technically, yes. So we're, are we really there yet or we're not in the thick of it yet? We are. We are. We haven't seen real big effects from that. That was kind of a concern. And then the other issue with that uh, is that it looks like we may switch back to La Nina again by the summer, which no. would be really bad. Yes. Come on, El Nino. Be somebody. Come on. <laughs> I'm now 6, 18, 41 degrees. Our producer's like, please stop talking. <laughs> okay, coming up after the break, can it be beneficial to speak more than one language? Yes. Patty Santos breaks down the benefits of being bilingual. Oh my gosh, I didn't play, Max. Did anyone win? I don't know. You still might have a chance. Oh, no one won. All right. Oh. But remember, even if you don't win the jackpot, you can still win a million or two million dollars. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty always, good day. Always play. Yeah. All right, here are your pick three. Two, three, zero, fireball zero, daily four. Five, eight, five, three, fireball five. Cash five, two, eight, 16, 24, 26, Texas Lotto, six, seven, 23, 34, 37, 50. Powerball, this is this got up to 760 million. It's, it's probably a lot more now because nobody won. 10, 11, 26, 27, 34, Powerball seven, power play four. Speaking more than one language can help boost your pay and chances of getting hired. That is why it is so important. So many of our local school districts, they offer those dual language programs. Patty Santos finds out just how much speaking more than English pays. Personally, I've been told it's great to be bilingual. Speak two languages. It's going to help you in the long run. You study this. Is it true? It definitely is. UTSA Associate Professor Whitney Chappelle says speaking more than one language can make you a more flexible thinker and better at multitasking. Being bilingual can actually delay the onset of dementia symptoms by about six years. Not to mention, too, an advantage in hiring, she says. Over two thirds of employers are more likely to give that job to the bilingual candidate than to the monolingual candidate. U.S. Census data looked at by language tutoring website Preply found San Antonio is the fourth most bilingual city in the U.S. Its research also found multilingual employees earn an average of 19 percent more. It's definitely important to highlight your bilingualism on your resume when you are applying for the job. Now even technology companies are seeking bilingual hires. Indeed.com shows more than 1,800 entry-level bilingual job postings in the Alamo City. Vamos a comenzar. The annual Northside ISD Spanish Spelling Bee gives students a time to show off their bilingual skills. We're starting to now be proud of our abilities to speak two languages. Julia Benavides, bilingual ESL specialist for NISD, says dual language programs are highly sought after. Nearly 30 campuses offer bilingual programs. And it's not only Spanish speaking families, it's families who speak English at home or other languages that are interested in becoming bilingual and biliterate. Patty Santos case at 12 News. All right, time now, 624, 41 degrees. Coming up after the break, why today's date is so significant to couples who are getting married today. Just tweeted this fun fact out. One, two, three, and counting. Today's date is the reason. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, for the record, if you yeah. didn't catch on. It is the reason, though, Vegas weddings could hit record numbers. It's the pattern that people are so amazed with, known in the Las Vegas wedding industry as a specialty date. So not only because of its repeating pattern of numbers, but it also falls on New Year's Eve. Vegas wedding companies Aww. say usually 400 to 500 couples tie the knot on New Year's Eve. That's just in Las Vegas, by the way. But this year, it's expected to surpass those numbers as the clock strikes Midnight, but you have to get married before right before midnight. midnight yeah. yeah, so you can get the one two three, one two three. Okay, I'm here for. It. I think it's cute. It's cute. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I, I'm the one that never remembers any of 
the anniversaries or dates. You couldn't forget it with that one, though. I know, but then like the day comes, you're like, oh, that's right, today's a day. Did you not get your husband an anniversary gift? <laughs> Time now, <laughs> 628, Let's... 41 degrees. Okay, still ahead, why vehicle crimes have residents recently worried and what Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar is saying about the crime. Plus, well, a look back at this year's court highlights. Case adds, Eric Hernandez talks about the trials that stood out in 2023. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm going to be completely transparent. We're like two minutes behind because we keep talking about stuff. I mean, it's the last day <laughs> of 2023, so we got to make the most of it. That's we true. And cherish it. Justin Horn is here, too, going off on these rants how it's the hottest year in record. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just going to not do that anymore. Maybe. Also, the Cowboys one, too. We had to talk about that. Oh, we haven't even got there yet. Gosh, we haven't, we haven't even talked yet. about that uh, yet. I hope the producer blocked off a lot of time for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at a picture here on our KSAT Connect. Uh, this is, well... Not something we want to see. That is uh, Mountain Cedar. It has been so very bad this week. Uh, it has been high the last couple of days, and I think we'll probably hold pretty steady over the weekend until we get into, well, until we get into Monday, uh, tomorrow, because we'll get some more gusty winds. And that's going to probably kick up Cedar again. So I just want to give you the heads up. We are in the thick of it, okay? Uh, this is the heart of Mountain Cedar season. And the pollen count, this is yesterday's number. We haven't got today's yet, but we will here soon. 5,710. It was in the high category, molds are low. And as we look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast, uh, we start off chilly 30s, but I think we get up into the 40s by nine o'clock and then eventually 60s by noon time. And then our high temperature close to 72 this afternoon. Gorgeous day, mostly sunny. And as we've been saying, the uh, weather looks pretty good. The forecast looks good for the festivities this evening. Uh, whatever you have planned before that front comes through tomorrow morning, and then we also have got some rain chances down the line, at least, to talk about. We'll have more on that coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys? Justin, thank you. This morning, we're learning more about the person who authorities say stabbed a woman in northwest Bear County more than 30 times. Bear County Sheriff's deputies believe her 13-year-old son is the suspect. They're not sure what weapon was used in the Thursday attack on Talon Run. A deputy heading toward that call ended up in a four-vehicle crash. Eight people were hurt and taken to the hospital, including a child with serious injuries. Deputies don't know what caused that crash. Well, families, they're now raising concerns over the number of vehicle crimes across San Antonio. The Bear County Sheriff's Department, they reported heightened car thefts and break-ins during the holiday season. One victim on the northwest side, they caught the thief on camera. So take a look at the video. It shows a person breaking the glass of the backseat window, taking things from her car. This is the first time experiencing a break-in for the victim, but BCSO says these thefts are on the rise. The sheriff, Javier Salazar, says when comparing these theft complaints the department sees on social media to actual calls reported, they're not the same. I didn't think it would happen to me, but lo and behold, here it is. Facebook and Nextdoor are nice for letting your neighbors know after the fact, but 911 is going to be what helps us catch somebody in the act and stop them from doing further harm. So... If you have a home, if you have a space of your own, BCSO recommends parking your car in the driveway or garage instead of the street. Always try to use security cameras, things like ring, and make sure they're in well-lit areas, all in an effort to prevent these crimes. And speaking of the sheriff, well, we have a special leading essay coming up at 8 a.m. We're set to talk to Sheriff Javier Salazar, not only about crime rates year over year, but also Talk about the border impact here in San Antonio and, of course, goals for 2024. If you have any questions, comments, concerns that you want to raise, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us at AM for the full conversation. High profile trials, shocking testimony and more than a few surprising plea deals all in the span of a year. It has been so active at the Bear County Courthouse. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the interesting events in court. Eric Hernandez brings back all the highlights from the past year. It was a big start to the year as the trial of Andre McDonald began in mid-January. McDonald, an Army major, was on trial for the murder of his wife, Andreen McDonald. In a shocking twist, he admitted to causing the death of his wife, but saying it was all in self-defense. I remember like grabbing her and like tripping her over one of my legs and then she like falls and that's when I kicked her like twice when she was when she fell. That wasn't all. He went on to say a day after dumping her body, he went back to light it on fire and even hit her several times with a hammer. 
In the end, McDonald was found not guilty of murder, but guilty of manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. An extra five years was added on for the tampering with evidence charge. In the summer, the retrial for Mark Howerton took place. Howerton was accused of the murder of his girlfriend, Trinity University cheerleader Kaylee Mandotti. A previous jury in 2019 couldn't decide on a verdict, but this time around they did. But it wasn't the verdict many were expecting. Howerton was found not guilty of murder, but guilty of aggravated assault and sentenced to 20 years in prison. In July, we were expecting the trial for Iman Johnson to take place. He was charged with starting a fire that caused the death of San Antonio firefighter Scott Deem in 2017. Instead, a 30-year plea deal was offered and accepted by Johnson. We saw emotional victim impact statements from Deem's family, fellow firefighter Brad Phipps, who was severely injured in the fire, and from SAFD chief Charles Hood. For the sake of my mental health, for the sake of my well-being, I have to forgive you, but I will never, ever forget. And neither will any of these people out here. In another shocking plea deal, Andrew Elizondo was given a 25-year sentence for the murder of six-year-old Soraya Perez. Elizondo shot at the vehicle Perez was in as it was leaving a car club gathering on Mother's Day in 2021. Elizondo is eligible for parole after serving half his sentence. In September, we were all watching the Sasha Scar trial. She was accused of the 2021 murder of aspiring San Antonio rapper Martel De Ruin. A ring doorbell video shown in court showed her with the gun in hand as she walked down the hallway of De Ruin's complex. Scar did testify in her own defense, but says she was attacked by De Ruin and he threw her out. But she grabbed his gun and said it accidentally went off when she was knocking on his door to get back in. That testimony wasn't enough, and a jury found her guilty, and she was sentenced to 55 years in prison. And finally, in October, in a courtroom, our cameras aren't allowed in. Cell phone video captured the moments inside when the family of shooting victim Ethan Soto attacked the suspect, Victor Rivas. BCSO said after Rivas made a gesture towards Soto's family, they jumped the partition and began assaulting him. Four people were arrested and charged with assault and disrupting court proceedings. For a look at other big moments that occurred, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Okay, Happy New Year's Eve. We're so close to bringing in the new year, and many people around San Antonio may find themselves starting the new year with popping fireworks legally or just relaxing at the home at you know, on your couch. On your couch, just chilling. All right, so whichever you choose to do, there are several live cams on our website, ksat.com, you and the family. You can watch the fireworks displays around the city. It is always amazing. You always see the cool videos from the Tower of Americas purviewing the entire city, and it's always like, oh, you can't shoot them off. Do you remember 2020? Oh, yeah. That was awesome. All yeah. right, so if you are popping fireworks, please, 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 please be safe. Be smart. And if you're not, just staying home, avoiding the chaos. You can stream it all. Just head to KSAT.com. And if you're still deciding on where, when, how to celebrate New Year's Eve, we have a full list of locations right now on KSAT.com. Some of those New Year's Eve celebrations, some of them are free. Some do require the purchase of a ticket. Again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, just head to the website. And as we mentioned before, practicing fireworks safety is important. Remember, popping fireworks inside the city is illegal. And it's easy to get distracted while handling fireworks. So we want to tell you about the do's and don'ts of fireworks. Do supervise kids using fireworks. Soak used fireworks with water before throwing them into the trash and use them in an open area with short to no grass away from vegetation. For the don'ts, do not shoot fireworks at other people or cars and do not try to relight a firework if it doesn't light the first time. Instead, place it in water and dispose it. Max, I mean, I had fireworks, people on my street shooting fireworks last night. Yeah. Yeah, as early as 5 p.m. It was like outside finishing up mowing and stuff. I was like, oh my God, what was it? Oh, fireworks, that's right. I'd rather 5 p.m. than 5 a.m. Well, they continued. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, time now, 641, 41 degrees. Can we see the sunrise in this shot? Not ah. really. Okay, so we have another shot off to the east where you can see the beautiful sunrise. sunrise. It's beautiful. Go out and take a look at it. It's gorgeous. Hey, Justin is in for Sarah. He'll have our forecast when we come back. 
Good morning and welcome back. All right, we've been talking about this through the morning, 2023, hottest year on record. It is. Bye-bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. It's over. Ciao. It's over with. Uh, 2024 is going to be better. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. It can't get worse, I Justin. Feel, I feel good about it. We're going to positive, positive thoughts. Speaking of positive thoughts, look at the sunrise. There it is. Gorgeous. Ah, yes. Cup of coffee this morning. Look at the colors. Uh, very, very nice. And uh, we'll continue to see uh, a nice sunrise here over the next couple of hours. 39 right now. New Braunfels, 42. Seguin, 44. Bernie, 50. We're down to freezing in Kerrville, 32 there. So chilly morning, not much of a wind there. So you're not dealing with a wind chill. Uh, we'll see those numbers warm up very quickly once the sun comes up and we get up to around 60 this afternoon. No, that's not true. That's tomorrow. Uh, we'll be up around 72 or so. That is the wrong graphic. Uh, 72 here in San Antonio. But what I can tell you is that this evening, uh, 60s are in the forecast, 7 to 8 o'clock. Uh, if you're going to be celebrating New Year's Eve. And then by 9 to 10 o'clock, we'll be in the 50s. White jacket might be necessary if you're going to be uh, out and about. And then uh, by the time we ring in the New Year, it'll be in the 50s, probably mid to low 50s. And the light and variable winds. Really good night to celebrate uh, the New Year. And I know a lot of people will be out downtown. A lot of people shooting off fireworks. The uh, one caution that we'll give to you here is that winds should be light around midnight. So that's that's good. But as we get into tomorrow morning, winds pick up because we get a cold front coming through gusts of 25 miles per hour. So this is when it becomes a little bit dangerous uh, with the fire danger. If the winds uh, do indeed pick up, and we've still got you know fireworks going off. Hopefully not that, uh, not that uh, early on Monday morning, but there's a possibility. So just be careful. Uh, satellite picture shows that we've got a few clouds uh, coming through Texas, mostly high clouds, uh, nothing to worry about, no rain associated with these clouds. But as we look back out to the west, here's our next storm system. We can see it on water vapor. You kind of got multiple spins here, but this energy consolidates and then works its way towards Texas as we get into Tuesday. And when it does, it should kick up some showers and maybe even a thunderstorm. So front comes through tomorrow morning does not bring any rain with it, but it does bring those gusty winds as I showed you cooler on Monday and those temperatures I showed you off the top. That's actually Monday's forecast. So we'll see a high right around 60 or so. Uh, so cooler than today and then clouds creep back in on Tuesday. Tuesday morning we'll see a few showers and then I think we have a pretty good opportunity to get some rain midday through Tuesday afternoon. This is five o'clock Tuesday. We could even see a few rumbles of thunder as some of this energy works through. Uh, and then that continues through about 10 o'clock Tuesday before this rain starts to shift east and get out of here. And by Wednesday morning, it's gone. Rainfall potential, eh, we're not going to get a lot. I think maybe a quarter of an inch out of this. But we do have another opportunity on Friday, so maybe we can add a little bit more. And at least we're starting off the new year with rain chances, so it could be worse. But I don't think the uh, numbers will be huge. Uh, as you get east and southeast, a better opportunity for heavy rain, about the uh, inch potentially down along the Texas Gulf Coast. So again, today, 72, our warmest day, by the way, in the seven day forecast. That front comes through 60 tomorrow, so we shave off about 12 degrees. 52 Tuesday, our coolest day because we'll get clouds and that potential for rain, 60%. And then 60s Wednesday and Thursday, pretty nice days before another rain chance kicks in on Friday. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. I just want to say how lucky we are. Not only to have Justin Horn, but also because I was I was outside yesterday. It was gorgeous, Beautiful. picture perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my parents. They're in the northeast, and they were like, it's "70 and sunny." <laughs> They're like, that "It is really freezing. Nice. It is misty. It is miserable here." And I was like, yeah. "Come on down, Come visit." Yeah. yeah, but then you leave during the summer, you know. No, I don't leave. Oh my God! I embrace the heat. He <laughs> loves the triple digits. It's crazy. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 648, 41 degrees. Okay, oh. lots to talk about here. Lots of, it was just, a, it was a roller Chaos. coaster. It was a roller coaster. Lots of screams, cheers in my neighborhood last night. In, in my your house. In my household. It was very dramatic. Hey, but Mac's going to break down the highlights of the Cowboys and Lions game. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Because all of you, it's what makes this game so great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just got one more thing to say. How about them Cowboys? We can.
can't help but to smile when you hear that and you see the love between him and all the old players. Beautiful moment at halftime at last night's game. Legendary former head coach Jimmy Johnson finally inducted into the Cowboys Ring of Honor. So let's get to the action. After a Detroit Lions field goal, Dak Prescott, this was crazy. Should have really gotten sacked. Should have been a safety. Then find CeeDee Lamb, look at that. The Lions defender falls and Lamb will walk it in for a 92-yard touchdown. I was going against him in the fantasy championship. We can all imagine that is now over. Jumping to the madness at the end of the game. Look at this. Boom. Lions down seven. Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown dives to the pylon. The Lions decide to go for two and go for the win. Goff play action. Finds his left tackle, Taylor Decker. But wait. This could have been a Lions win. No. Illegal touching is the call. They say Decker did not declare himself as an eligible receiver. Lions would get a couple more shots at a two-point conversion but they cannot make it happen. Your Dallas Cowboys coming away, sneaking by with a huge win, 20 to 19. They now have a record of 11 and five, and yes, they're undefeated at home this season. All right, from the field to the court, San Antonio Spurs taking on the Boston Celtics tonight, closing out 2023. The road trip ended Friday night in what could have been a remarkable comeback for the Spurs. They trailed the Trailblazers, pun intended, by 26 points in the third. But with Wemby on the bench getting rest, Kelvin Johnson came off the bench and dropped the season high 29 points. Sadly, the Spurs still lost by six. And Coach Bob liked the physicality from his guys. I told the team I was proud of them the way they hung tough. Uh, you know, a young group can just give in. Uh, but they got back in the ball game by uh, playing more physically themselves, moving better on offense, and uh, not being knocked all over the court like they were in the first half. All right. I know people are off the Spurs. Yeah. But cautious optimism going forward. Okay. Yeah. 2024. 2024. Oh, 2024. Is it the year of the Spurs? Let's make some resolutions. <laughs> oh, okay. Time now, 655, 41 degrees. Here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. And good morning to you on this New Year's Eve. Coming up here on GMA, we are, of course, just hours away from the new year. Millions set to celebrate tonight. The preparations underway and the heightened security for the major event here and abroad. And breaking overnight, the U.S. Central Command saying Navy helicopters sank three of four small Houthi boats in the Red Sea that were trying to attack a container ship, killing all crew members. We will also talk exclusively here with National Security Council Coordinator John Kirby right here this morning morning. Plus, a visit of gratitude. Jeremy Renner makes a holiday visit to the healthcare workers who saved his life last year after an accident that nearly took his life. Incredible to see him doing so well. And that is all ahead right here on GMA on this New Year's Eve. We're still talking Cowboys here. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot because I didn't see the game okay. and now I'm, I'm getting caught up on things. So we do. We inform people. Uh, you know, I'm guessing a lot of people that watch that game probably sleep in this morning. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. If or you're with they're us. turning your TV on because it was on KSAT. Oh, that's mm. true. Oh, good point. Good morning. Good morning, yeah, good morning to you. Uh, 72 degrees today. It's going to turn out to be beautiful, beautiful, mostly sunny. Now, tonight, weather should be good. Temperatures in the 50s as we ring in the new year. There is a front, though, that comes through early tomorrow morning, brings some gusty winds with it. So we start off the new year a little cooler, 60. And then as we head back to work and school on Tuesday, 60% chance of rain. Uh, so be aware that the evening commute could be a little dicey. Okay. Justin Horn, do you have any good plans for New Year's Eve? Honestly, no. I think I'm going to take it easy tonight. Just Family to time. Family Aww. time. Maybe okay. play some games. Uh, we'll see how like, the, the kids stay up. Y'all are going to a nice dinner, right? Yeah, and you're going to an inferior state. Sarah Coast <laughs> is taking her talents to wow. Oklahoma. You know, just I, don't, I think that's an, an objective <laughs> wow. statement. It, it'll Texas, be fun. Just, better than Oklahoma. <laughs> Just drive eight hours. Yeah. To go. Sounds so much fun. All right, we have a lot more to talk about. We're going to take an hour long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See y'all at 8. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We're starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. A gorgeous start to the last weekend of 2023. The sun is out. Shout out to Justin Horn, who ran to the roof of KSAT, got a gorgeous shot of the sunrise, last sunrise of 2023. And the big question, what will the weather look like 
for your New Year's Eve. We're going to check in with Justin in just a few moments, but for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. It is one, two, three. You didn't seem that excited about it earlier. Well, but now, now, now I am. Now Max. you are. Okay, so <laughs> what are you doing for New Year's Eve? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> Middle of nowhere. Love it. So my friends are getting together and we're going to celebrate out there. I'm leaving after the show. Yeah, I had a somewhat controversial take in the last show. I said, you're going to visit a far inferior state than I, Texas. I, I, I stand don't, with that statement. As a Texas girl, mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you. Okay. Yeah. Justin Horn, are you going to Oklahoma too? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> uh, I'm staying right here. We're going to celebrate. Uh, here with the, the kiddos tonight, if they can stay up that late. Uh, it's going to be a great, uh, great evening, though. If you've got plans to celebrate New Year's Eve, uh, 60s, around 7 or 8 o'clock, it'll be comfortable. We'll have uh, mostly clear skies, 50s by 9 and 10 o'clock. So you may want a light jacket, as we've been saying. And then by uh, the time we ring in the new year, it'll be in the 50s, light and variable winds. Looking pretty good. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of problems tonight. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of people celebrating. Uh, if you're going downtown especially. Uh, as we look at temperatures right now, we're at 37 at the airport, down at 32 in Boulevard, 29 Comfort and 31 in Kerrville. So there are some spots that are uh, getting down to freezing this morning. I don't anticipate that happening here in San Antonio. And in fact, now that the sun's up, we'll see those temperatures start to turn a corner. Let's look at some of the weather headlines here. Uh, front will be moving in New Year's Day right before sunrise tomorrow. So that kicks up the winds a little bit. It will be cooler on New Year's Day. Then we get some rain. Tuesday, showers, rumble of thunder, possible, could affect the evening commute. And we're going to talk about the record heat. You're probably not surprised by this, but 2023 rewrote the record books. Uh, we'll look at those stats for you, plus the seven-day forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Hours after being arrested on suspicion of drunk driving, a San Antonio councilman says... He did not feel intoxicated. Councilman Mark Wyatt is the second District 10 councilman to be arrested on a DWI charge almost a year after Clayton Perry was charged with his own DWI after a hit and run. Police say White was driving on Loop 410 eastbound just before the 281 exit. The officer says seeing White's car drift back and forth inside his lane and switching lanes without signaling. Records also show White was driving 80 miles an hour in a 65 zone. The arrest report says White told the officer he had three beers at three different locations, but claimed he was sober. In a search warrant, the officer notes White smelled like alcohol, had glossy red eyes, and couldn't keep his balance. In a statement, he says he did not feel intoxicated when he drove home and, quote, I never get behind the wheel when I feel as if I've had too much to drink, but that isn't the point. End quote. White is set to be arraigned next month. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Department, they are reporting heightened car thefts and break-ins during this holiday season. Uh, one victim lives on the northwest side, and they caught a theft all on camera. So take a look at this video. It showed a person breaking the glass of her backseat window, taking things from her vehicle. This was the first time experiencing a break-in like this, but BCSO says they are on the rise. The sheriff, Javier Salazar, says when comparing these theft complaints, the department sees on social media to actual calls reported, well, there seems to be some sort of disparagement. I didn't think it would happen to me, but lo and behold, here it is. Facebook and Nextdoor are nice for letting your neighbors know after the fact, but 911 is going to be what helps us catch somebody in the act and stop them from doing further harm. So BCSO makes easy recommendations. Park your car in the driveway or the garage instead of on the street. Use security cameras, things like ring door cameras, and make sure you're parked in well-lit areas. Easy ways to prevent these crimes. And the last two stories really led perfectly up to leading SA. Crime is on top of so many families' minds, whether that is violent crime or like we just saw, property crime. So joining us in today's Leading SA segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, guys. Good morning to you all. Thanks for having me on. Good morning. This is almost like the Sheriff Show. We just had you on. We just <laughs> talked about two crimes in and around our area. And look, we, have, we saw a jarring stat yesterday. Murders are down 12.8% across the year. And that's across more than 176 cities. So sure. what do the numbers look like here locally? And what are some of the trends that you guys are following? Well, I'll tell you right now, we're seeing uh, a couple of crimes that go hand in hand. Juvenile crime seems to be up. 
Gun crime seems to be up. Burglars of vehicles uh, is something that we're seeing. And drive-by shootings is something that's making a resurgence, uh, disturbingly enough, uh, both random and targeted, it seems to be. Uh, matter of fact, right now, I just got a text message. We're handling a shooting as, as we speak uh, that happened in the wee hours. And so it's, it's just something that we're seeing on the rise. Where is the shooting that you're handling? Uh, that shooting is off Petrenko, 1604 area. Now, when you say the rise in crimes, is that year over year or is that just recently after the holiday season? No, here we've been seeing it, it, it trend upward uh, over the course of the past couple months. Uh, so I think this this week what we've seen is just kind of a snapshot of what we've been seeing trending upward over the past couple of months, unfortunately. Okay, Sheriff, so drinking and driving. Just yesterday we saw a city councilman arrested for drinking and driving, and you know, we know a lot of people will be out tonight celebrating, uh, ringing in the new year. So what is your message to those who will be out having a good time, and will there be extra law enforcement out there as well? Uh, there will absolutely be extra law enforcement out there from the sheriff's office, for sure. We made a plan several weeks ago, and we're going to have a lot of deputies out there looking for DWIs. And so the best bet is to just not do it. Uh, you know, earlier I saw that quote where uh, the councilman said he didn't feel intoxicated. Uh, people should know that the, the first sign of impairment or the first thing that goes is your sense of judgment. And so you may you may not feel intoxicated. You may feel like you're okay to drive, but... Again, know that your judgment is the first thing that's going to go out the window and, you know, you may be more intoxicated than you know. And so just the best bet is to make a plan ahead of time before you even leave the house, make arrangements to stay where you are, take an Uber, take a bus, designated driver. And a designated driver is not somebody who's been the, drinking the least among the crowd. The designated driver is somebody who hasn't been drinking at all. It seems like this problem is so pervasive in and around our community. Not only is it drinking and driving, but also wrong way drivers. How big of an issue do you see it from your end? Uh, you know, wrong way drivers is something that even back to my days as, as spokesman at the SAPD, it was something that, that seems to be, I wouldn't say uniquely a San Antonio phenomenon, but for some reason, and I don't know that we've ever put our finger on it, it seems to occur more here than in other parts of the country. Um, you know, it's something that, that while we may not figure out why anytime soon, it's something that, that absolutely has the ability to become everybody's problem, anybody's problem at any given time, especially on an eye like tonight, New Year's Eve, New Year's. A lot of people are going to be out partying and drinking. And the best bet, again, is to make a plan before you leave the house. Okay, Sheriff, so let's talk about the impact from the border. We've covered the record-breaking numbers at the border from illegal border crossings to shifting policies to economic impact. So if SB4 goes into effect, how do you plan to address it? I mean, look, I, don't, I just don't see it. I don't think that we're going to see that much of a change here in Bear County as to how we are uh, you know, enforcing the law. You know, for the most part, from what I have seen, uh, the immigrants that are coming through, while they are great in number, most of those folks, they don't want problems with law enforcement. Uh, they're here looking for a job. And so they're not looking to screw that up by any stretch of the imagination. And so with that being said, if somebody breaks the law, documented, undocumented U.S. citizen, if somebody breaks the law, they're going to go to jail. Uh, absent that, I don't think that we're you're going to see a whole bunch of Bear County Sheriff's deputies, you know, going out into the streets and demanding to see papers from anybody that, that moves. Uh, we're just going to continue to enforce the law as it as it comes to us. And if, uh, you know, if anybody breaks the law, they're going to be held accountable. And what impact have you guys seen? Obviously, we talk about the record numbings day in and day out. Have you guys seen an impact locally? Um, you know, we have not. Uh, I, I just that's not who's committing crimes in Bear County. Uh, and that may be with some an, un, an, un, uh, an unpopular uh observation on my part but that's not who's committing crimes in bear county the the uh, the immigrant community uh i'm right across the street here i'm at the office this morning right across the street here i've got about 4200 inmates the vast majority of them being u.s citizens um so i just i don't see the the influx of these folks being a problem for us uh, i know there's a lot of them i know that there's people that are disturbed by their very presence you know, that's a matter of opinion. But with that being said, I just don't see them being a, a massive danger to society. OK, so we're wrapping up 2023. 2024 starts in just a few hours. What are your top priorities for next year? 
Well, look, the reason I'm here Sunday morning is all this paperwork behind me. Those are all applicant files, people that are starting their career at the sheriff's office uh, this in the coming weeks. Uh, so we're starting a couple classes in the next couple of weeks. We're graduating a couple classes. Recruitment is going really, really well for us. And so that's one of our top priorities is trying to close the, the gap on manpower. Uh, but with that being said, we've also uh, been blessed that uh, we've got about 50 new deputy positions coming to us in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, most of those, the patrol, the, the patrol deputies, obviously, are going to patrol. Uh, we are going to be able to get more assets out there onto the road. And so people will probably see more patrol deputies as we get those folks hired and trained up and out onto the streets for sure. But also we're getting an influx of new investigator positions and new supervisor positions. What that's going to allow us to do is concentrate our efforts on some of the crimes that we see uh, trends in. Although we didn't talk about it earlier, uh, senior frauds and scams are something that we're seeing go up. And so we may be standing up a unit to target specifically that. Uh, additionally, unfortunately, we're seeing crimes against children and sexual offenses go up. And so one of the things that we'll be able to do with the influx of new, new investigators is beef up our special victims unit a unit that we stood up for the first time several years back. Uh, we're going to be beefing it up. And then we're going to be breaking off our child safe unit, which is also a special victims offshoot, but for, only for children. Uh, that's going to be broken off in, into a separate unit and beefed up as well. Uh, and so we're looking forward to some of the things that you'll be seeing from the sheriff's office in coming months. Well, Sheriff Javier Salazar, we'll let you get back to your paperwork, finish those applications. I see that big stack behind you. Good luck with that so you can you know, get it done, get to your family and celebrate New Year's Eve. Thank you so much, guys. Be safe. God bless. Thank you, too. Time now, 812, 41 degrees. Well, have you bought fireworks for tonight yet hot, after the break? Take. Ready for this? Ready. I'm out on fireworks. <laughs> we'll take a live look at how the fireworks stands around the city are prepping for New Year's Eve. And of course, the big question, is the weather going to permit you to see the fireworks? It's a gorgeous start to the last day of 2023. We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back. It is New Year's Eve, so we know a lot of people still need to buy fireworks for tonight. Time is ticking down as we're counting down to 2024. Remember, you can legally pop fireworks outside of city limits. <laughs> the fireworks stands will be busy today, so let's take a live look at some that just opened. Do we have the uh, MJ, our producer? Okay, maybe not a live look, but. Mm, okay. We will get a live look. So we're going to be talking about the mega store. All right. And here we go. It is on the west side. It's off Highway 90. Our photojournalist Alexis is there right now. New data from Statista's Consumer Insight Survey says, get this, only 23% of Americans believe fireworks are integral to New Year's Eve. I am not in that small percentage. <laughs> the highest country being Mexico. 37% say fireworks are essential. But the U.S. fireworks industry is reporting almost $3 billion, whoa, will be spent on fireworks just this year, with the number expected to rise to almost $4 billion in the next few years. Okay, can you guess the largest consumer of fireworks in the United States? What is it? It's Disney. I know you were looking at the script. <laughs> I know you were looking. All right. Jeez. So it, That's it, why I asked. Yeah, that was good. All right, so obviously creating some interesting stories through the sparks and we want to remind those who are watching here we go here's the live look you can buy fireworks here you can't recycle fireworks no you can't they have to be thrown in the trash but before you throw them in the trash you need to soak them in water and you know you because you just never know right better be smooth you know safe than sorry and, and Go for it. Oh, okay. Here's a fun fact. Fireworks mm. weren't created by Chinese scholars to scare off mountain men. That is okay. folklore. There you go. Justin Horn, are you going to be lighting up fireworks tonight? I will not. Yeah, me neither. Uh, you know, Same. My, my, neighbors, <laughs> my neighbors do enough for, for the, everyone. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah. You know, I remember when we were kids and being at a ranch, we would shoot Roman candles at each other. And now I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, not a good idea. So if are, dangerous. If do there are not do that. If you're watching right now, don't do that. You do I, not do that. It was horrible. Yeah. And I'm just like, how did we do that? <laughs> like, that was, it was different time. It was different time. That's for sure. Please and now I don't even weather. touch fireworks. Just stop talking. <laughs> Justin Horn, please tell us about the weather. Oh, uh, you just gave all those precautions and you're like, you're Roman candles. No, uh, I said, don't do that. Don't, I used to do it. Don't, don't. do it. Uh, yes, let's I hope the weather. sheriff's still listening. <laughs> 
2023 is over with, y'all. In, uh, in many ways, we're saying good riddance because of the heat. 72.6 was our average temperature this year. That is the hottest year on record for San Antonio. Since records have been kept, and let's go back to 1885 if you were curious. Uh, next in line was 2006 and 1933, where we averaged 72.1. 2022, we averaged 71.8. And you may be asking, well, that doesn't seem like a huge number. Well, keep in mind, this average is in the highs and the lows. We got down into the teens in January of this year. So it's kind of an astounding number if you think about it in that regard. And uh, yeah, the summer is what really put us over the top. Uh, what a brutal summer. If you want to read more about it, we have a QR code there for you. You can scan that, and we have a great article on our website for you to read. Uh, as we go outside for you, it was a beautiful sunrise, and we've still got some of those thin, serious clouds in the sky. So we'll see those off and on, but still plenty of sun, too. It turned into a really nice day. Temperatures right now, 37. It's chilly. 39 in New Braunfels, 40 in Seguin, 48 Bernie, 31 in Kerrville. But it, by next hour, you're going to see these numbers start to take some big jumps. And by noontime, we'll make it all the way up to 66. Partly cloudy is what we'll call it. And then as we head into the afternoon, mostly sunny. Temperatures around 72 for a high today. Another gorgeous day. And then down into the 60s tonight, 59 by 8 p.m. And speaking of that, uh, your celebrations here. Yes, yeah, 60s between 7 and 8 o'clock. Uh, it'll be comfortable. But it does get a little cool by 9, 10 o'clock. We'll drop down into the 50s. A uh, light jacket might be necessary, and we'll probably be in the 50s around midnight as we welcome in the new year. We've had some not-so-great New Year's Eves uh, in years past. This one's going to be really nice. Uh, other than, yes, the winds will be light around midnight, but I will tell you, as we get into tomorrow morning, winds will pick up uh, because we are going to see a frontal battery moving through. So uh, you just heard some of those uh, precautions about fireworks. Be careful because once we get those gusty winds Monday morning, there is you know, a little bit of a fire threat there. As we look across the country, not a lot going on. We've got some snow across the Midwest, and we're watching a storm system, which is starting to gather some strength here over the uh, Pacific. This will start to kind of come together in more organized fashion, and it works its way towards Texas, and that's what's going to give us the lift for some showers and storms on Tuesday. So our front comes through tomorrow morning, breezy as it does, some gusts to 25 miles per hour, and partly cloudy tomorrow. Tuesday, though, clouds begin to fill in, and it becomes overcast. Then we'll start to see some showers as early as midday. These continue on afternoon into Tuesday evening. Could even see a few rumbles of thunder. So a decent chance of rain here. Then this starts to scoot east Tuesday night, and it's out of here by Wednesday morning. How much rain could we see? Uh, not a lot. I'm thinking probably a quarter of an inch at best here around San Antonio. Lower amounts to the west, and as it often is, higher amounts to the east. Uh, could have see up to an inch of rain down there along the Texas coast. Not a big rainmaker for us, but at least there is rain in the forecast. And we've got another opportunity down the line on Friday. So 60 tomorrow behind the front. Cool down of about 12 degrees and then cool and potentially rainy on Tuesday, 52 with 60s for the rest of the work week. It's gorgeous out there. It really is. It's been a nice stretch. We earned it, though. Uh, we're ending 2023 very nicely, but after the summer we had, we, we earned it. I cannot agree with you more. Yes, Justin. that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. 822, 41 degrees. After the break, we'll take a look at the top trending year in review articles on KSAT.com. Good morning and welcome back. Trending on KSAT.com from the Hill Country to major events around the Lone Star State. Photojournalists around Texas capturing, get this, almost 20,000 photos of what was going on this year across Texas. For a month-to-month -month breakdown and an ultimate year in review of Texas, well, just look for the article right now. Head to KSAT.com. And as we are on 123123. Nice. We're taking a look back at all the great pictures you've shared mm. with us over the years via KSAT Connect. So right now on KSAT.com, you too can look at some of the most viewed pictures over the past 12 months submitted by our viewers. Thank you guys so much for always sharing your beautiful pictures with us. You know, I know our meteorologists love sharing those also on air during our show. So keep doing it. We love it. Big fan. Uh, I love the top left one. Fiesta. Fiesta. It was fantastic. It was actually such a pleasure meeting so many of you guys out there. KSAT, you know, we do it best with Fiesta. 100%. Time now, just about 827, 41 degrees. We'll be right back.
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve. The countdown to 2024 has begun. OK, so I said it earlier okay. during the break. I'm not about resolutions. I'm mm -hmm. about following your passions. Is that only because you refuse to set a resolution? I just feel like you're setting yourself up to fail where it's like, just, just do what you want to do. But couldn't you say Be that about any goal that you set in life? Oh my gosh, Max and his goals. I have goals. My goal is to follow my passions. That's a great goal. Yeah. Justin Horn, do you have any resolutions? What are your passions, Justin? Now I'm confused. <laughs> I, because my passion is eating, so I feel like I should just eat Do it. Yes. Then, you know, we're not, I'm supposed to, you know, eat healthier, whatever. That's what they tell you for resolutions. No? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, Make your own resolution. <laughs> Let's take a look at the KSA Connect. Uh, this is a beautiful sunrise this morning. Uh, I, I, I posted a picture of myself. The colors were incredible. Pinks and purples. Uh, great shot here coming in on our KSA Connect. And if you want to add in a picture, please do. Uh, you can find that on our KSAT app and our KSAT weather app as well. Pretty easy to upload a photo and you can look at other photos uh, other people took as well. Pollen count, not in yet. But this is yesterday's number and I'll show you this because it has been high all week. I would imagine the mountain cedar is probably going to stay in that range. We don't know for sure. But I think by tomorrow, with a gusty north wind, it may come up some. We are in the thick of mountain cedar season. Just prepare yourself. Uh, it's probably going to be another rough week. Temperatures today, 48 degrees by 9 o'clock. We're at 63, 11 o'clock, 66 noon time. And then we make our way up to 72 this afternoon. Really, really nice. Mostly sunny. And as we work into the evening hours, getting ready to celebrate, we'll see temperatures in the 60s and Eventually 50s. We'll be in the 50s once we ring in the new year. A little colder tomorrow, though. Cold front moves in, gusty winds, and we have rain chances to talk about on Tuesday. Another look at that forecast in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. We're starting off with morning headlines. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel's war with the terrorist organization Hamas will go on for, quote, many more months. Now, this comment, well, it comes after weeks of persistent international calls for a ceasefire, even though there have been offers for a ceasefire and Hamas has rejected them. So Netanyahu also thanking the Biden administration for continued backing of Israel. That includes a brand new approval of an emergency weapon sales and the Biden administration long agreeing with Israel, saying that if they were to stop fighting, it would be a victory for the terrorists. And Biden and other top U.S. officials, they continue urging Israel to avoid any further harm to Palestinian citizens. Special counsel Jack Smith is disputing former President Donald Trump's claim that he should have absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. In a document filed yesterday, Smith says Trump's claim, quote, threatens to license presidents to commit crimes to remain in office, end quote. This comes less than two weeks before the immunity issue goes before the U.S. Appeals Court in Washington, D.C. And Sarah Costa, I know why you showed up to work today. It's because you didn't win I didn't the win. jackpot last night. Well, here's the fun fact. No one won the Powerball jackpot Woo, last night. Go. Someone did win $2 million in Tomball. Mm. Yeah. yeah, look at Good that. Good for you. All right, so the Powerball website says the price has grown to an estimated $810 million. The next drawing is tomorrow night. So what a way to kick off 2024. Okay, so that's one of my passions to win the power. Win the, win the lottery. <laughs> win the lottery. Okay. Yeah. It's a good passion. I wish you the best of luck. Great passion. If Sarah's not here next weekend, we all know why. Bye. <laughs> all right. Since it is New Year's Eve, one, two, three, one, two, three, let's do some New Year's Eve trivia. No looking at okay. your scripts. iPads or scripts. Gotcha. Okay. So question number one, how much confetti is dropped in Times Square on New Year's Eve? Oh, I like how they have the confetti in the background. Is it 500 pounds? Mm. 1,000 pounds? One ton or Ooh. two tons? Ooh. Okay, for those out there who don't know, one ton is 2,000 pounds. So I'm going to go with C, one ton. Justin? I agree, C. That's no fun. Okay, the answer is? Ah. Well, Sarah, C. you got to partake too. No, I knew the answer. How did you know the answer? I'm just kidding, I didn't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> one ton has its own team to drop off that one ton of confetti or 1,000 pounds for New Year's Eve. All right, so... Question number two. For 2024, what is the most popular New Year's resolution? A, work out more. B, improve finances. That's a good one. C, read more. D, gossip less. Oh, no fun. Uh, uh. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to go with, people usually say A, but I think I'm going to go with B, improve finances. Justin? That's what I was going to say. 
is B. I'm going to go with A. I think probably it's everyone wants to work out more and eat healthier. So let's see. Da -da -da -da. The answer is a. yeah. Mm. Work out more. So several polls from companies like Forbes and Statista. Big shout out to Statista this morning. Well, they show nearly half of respondents say they want to improve their fitness journey in the new year. Next most popular. Okay. Okay. So you guys got second place. You're close. Yeah. If you're not like first, that. you're last. All right. Last question. How many San Antonio residents attend the San Antonio New Year's Eve party downtown? Ooh. Is it A, 55,000 people, B, 60,000, C, 70,000, or D, 85? I'm going to go with, I don't know, 60? Hmm. Okay. I'll say C. Okay, I'm going to go with A. Okay. Nice. All right. Nice. The answer is 70,000 people. Well done. You're our Jeopardy won. champ. Okay. So it's produced by the city and the San Antonio Parks Foundation. Celebrate San Antonio is the city's official New Year's Eve event. It does draw 70,000 party goers annually. And San Antonio Parks Foundation says this year's theme, dancing in the streets. Mm -hmm. It's going to run starting at 6 p.m. today, running to midnight. And here's the best part, y'all. It is free. It is open to all ages. So if you guys don't have plans... Other than Sarah, who's leaving Texas for Oklahoma. Oh my gosh! Justin Horn. I never told you. <laughs> head out there, and here's the best part: it is the, not the only event happening in and around San Antonio today. We have a full article right now, KSAT.com, list of all the celebrations going on around town. But no matter what you're doing, be safe, have fun. Please be safe with fireworks. So if you don't have time to go get fireworks, we have several live cams around the city that will be capturing the countdown to 2024 on our website. This is a fun way to enjoy fireworks. Just look for this article with all the live cams. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. It was fireworks for Cowboys fans last night. Beautiful moment at halftime. We saw the legendary former head coach Jimmy Johnson finally inducted into the Cowboys ring of honor, but it was really the action in the game that everyone's talking about. After a Detroit Lions field goal, Dak Prescott almost gets sacked, but finds a way out. Then, look at this. I mean, this is a miraculous throw. The defender falls, CeeDee Lamb walking in a 92-yard touchdown. That is a nine-point swing from a safety to a touchdown. The longest passing touchdown in the NFL this season, jumping to the madness. End of the game, Lions down seven. Goff. I'm on Ross St. Brown, who finds the pylon. The Lions, though, instead of just being happy with one to go to overtime, they go for two. Then he finds his left tackle, Taylor Decker. Boom. Beautiful catch over two defenders. <gasps> but wait, there is a flag. The refs say Decker did not declare himself an eligible receiver. The Lions, they get two more shots at this, and they don't get it. Can't make it happen. So, regardless of all the drama, whether you like the refs or don't like the refs, there's a bunch of disputes this morning. The Cowboys go on Woo! to win it 20 to 19. What a thriller. And they now have a record 11 and 5 undefeated at Jerry World this season. A team that is very much not undefeated at home. San Antonio Spurs taking on the Boston Celtics tonight, closing out 2023. The road trip ended on Friday, which would, could have been a remarkable comeback for the Spurs. They trailed the Trailblazers, pun intended, by 26 points in the third quarter. Wemby was on the bench getting some rest, so Keldon Johnson came off the bench and dropped a season-high 29 points. They pulled in within a few, but they still lost by six. Coach Pop says, though, a little optimistic. He said he loves the physicality from his guys. I told the team I was proud of the way they hung tough. Uh, you know, a young group can just give in. Uh, but they got back in the ball game by uh, playing more physically themselves, moving better on offense, and you know, not being knocked all over the court like they were in the first half. And of course, a little game preview for tonight starts at 6 p.m. at the Frost Bank Center. The teams have opposite win losses, meaning, you know, the Celtics are one of the best teams in the league. Spurs, one of the worst records was. And current Spur, or current Celtic, former Spur, Derek White, of course, Bassey Collins, Duke Jr., they're all out. While Wemby is on a minutes restriction, Barlow is questionable to play. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. That go. is a new, that is a resolution right there. What is it? For the Spurs to have a better season. I don't know how much control you have over that. Well, I can suggest it, right? Yeah, there you go. Time now, 840, 42 degrees. Taking a look outside with live cam, 42 degrees.
beautiful morning. Hey, of those 70,000 people, I know a lot of people are visiting San Antonio, celebrating today and tomorrow. Justin Horn will have your forecast for you when we come back. Happening today. This is actually really, really cool. The San Antonio Zoo hosting Dog Day nice. at Zoo Lights event. So it's a nice way for you and your pet to get out and enjoy New Year's Eve. The event starts at 11 a.m., ends at 9 p.m. I love this because every time I go to the zoo and leave mm -hmm. my dogs for hours, I feel guilty like leaving them and they don't get to enjoy this. So this is like very, this doesn't happen all the time. So go enjoy it. They're going to have live music from 5.30 to 8.30. Dogs must be up to date on rabies mm. vaccination, so you have to prove that. So make sure you have their record, and they have to be on leash, of course. So tickets cost around $27 with tax. For more information on the event, head to our website. We'll have the link for sazoo.org. Speaking of pets, all San Antonio Pets Live locations, they are running low on laundry detergents, 30 and 13 gallon trash bags, Treats, toys, newspapers, puppy pads, and either new or used blankets. They're asking for your donations. You can ship them or you can drop them off to the medical center location that is on Marbach Road or San Antonio Pets Alive Rescue Center right off Highway 151. Both locations will accept donations any day this week between noon and 6 p.m. Volunteers really stressing that puppy pads and blankets are especially needed right now. Today is a day that everyone celebrates, but it's not such a happy day for your dogs and cats. You know New Year's can be very stressful for your pets, so Animal Care Services has some things to keep in mind to keep your family member, your furry family member, safe. First, fireworks should never be set off near pets. Second, give your pet a quiet place, closed off area inside your home. Also give them toys, treats, their favorite blankets to comfort them, maybe a weighted blanket, mm. along with fresh food and water. Also never leave your pet unattended outside, even in a fenced-in yard. Lastly, Animal Care Service says they see a big increase in pets escaping this time of year. So make sure your pet is microchipped, wearing a collar. My dogs absolutely hate fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, it's very stressful for them. Justin, does Penny, your dog, this is the first year with your dog, right? Yeah, she she was really young last year, so we'll we'll see how it goes. I, maybe I should invent some like noise canceling headphones for dogs. Like seriously, <laughs> I would maybe invest. Should, like, Let's I do this. Thinking about that. Oh, take them out to the, go to use the restroom early in the night. Oh, that's a good idea. Because once they won't go outside. If, yeah. if they get scared. I think you got a billion dollar idea on your hands here, Justin. How has this not been thought I know. of? I'm going to go on Shark Day. They probably, <laughs> I could probably find something on Amazon. Yeah, they probably do have it. Yeah, the Penny will probably be under the bed at some point oh. later tonight. Yeah, because, you know, uh, we are going to be, uh, there's going to be fireworks going yeah. off. That's just <laughs> how it works. But we are going to be welcoming in the new year with good temperatures. It's going to turn out to be really nice today. 72 uh, here in San Antonio. This afternoon, 67 Ferox Ranch, 67 Bernie, 71 in Canyon Lake. Really, really nice day. We'll see mostly sunny skies during the afternoon. Here's a look at the New Year's Eve celebrations forecast. If you missed it earlier, well, we'll have temperatures in the 60s uh, during the 7 to 8 o'clock hour, 50s by 9 to 10 o'clock, and then probably still in the 50s when uh, we hit midnight. So light and variable winds, really pretty good weather when you consider this is uh, in the middle of winter here. This is not bad at all. Uh, and then as we get into tomorrow, we will get a front that comes through. It arrives just before sunrise tomorrow. That kicks up the wind. So we're not going to have a lot of winds around midnight. But during the morning hours, we could get some gusts up to around 25 miles per hour, which talking about the fireworks, I, you know, when you have gusty winds like this, that can cause a little bit of a fire issue. Uh, hopefully all the fireworks, fireworks will be done by then. Uh, rain chances. Are we going to get any rain? Well, Tuesday is our best opportunity. I think at this point we'll get some showers and maybe a couple thunderstorms and then we'll have another chance on Friday. So a couple of opportunities as we head into the new year. Satellite picture shows uh, just a few thin high clouds. That's why we had the great sunrise this morning. These are perfect clouds for that. These cirrus clouds that are thin and high in the sky. Uh, we'll get those to kind of clear out and then we'll be waiting our next uh, storm system, which is still out to the west, but it helps to push the front through. And then behind that front, as that storm system pulls in, then we'll get some showers and storms. So front tomorrow, I'd say again, just before sunrise, breezy conditions as it does. And then we'll get some clouds off and on tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, as that storm system comes in from the west, we'll see clouds increase, some showers start to develop. And I think by midday, we'll get some showers and 
maybe even a thunderstorm. Uh, and that will continue through about five o'clock. So we've got to think about the evening commute on Tuesday. It could be a little bit damp. We're all heading back to work and school. Not the best timing, but at least we are getting some rain in the forecast. Uh, this picks up a little bit as it scoots east. So we'll have some better rainfall totals, I think, east of San Antonio. But this is 10 o'clock. Things are already starting to wind down at this point and by Wednesday morning. The rain will be out of here uh, and it will clear out pretty quickly. So here's the extended forecast 60 tomorrow, about a 12 degree drop behind the front. 52 Tuesday, that's it. 60% chance of rain. So cool and kind of damp day. And then 60s on Wednesday and Thursday. We'll get another chance for some showers on Friday and then uh, 60s next week. And not a bad forecast as we head into 2024. Okay. Some bad news for you, Justin. Justin. Someone already invented it, didn't yes. they? Yes, okay. There's multiple products. To our viewers, mm -hmm. do yourself a va favor. Go on Amazon and type in headphones for dogs. These are so cute. The pictures are cute. I mean, look at that. They have like little bunny ears. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at the So, Justin, <laughs> there, there's a full market for it. And shouts to our photojournalist, Adam Braza. He actually sent me a couple of them as well. Oh, he did? Yeah. He's These like, are no, so cute. Do they stay on, though? I feel like the dog okay. would like, well, then, Well, they make the ones, like, where is it? Look, those probably stay on. Oh, the yeah. cloth ones? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, right, I just want to look at pictures of dogs all how day. How have we not heard of this though? Because you've had a dog for how many How many oh, years? Like for 20, my whole yeah. life. And just yeah. never thought of it. No. Okay, so there now are solutions know. out there. Now we know. <laughs> now we know. Justin Horn, thank you for bringing this to light. <laughs> Anytime. Time now, 850, 44 degrees. And as we head to break, we wanted to let our wonderful viewers know there will be no GMSA shows tomorrow. Everyone should be celebrating. New Year's Day. We'll be back Tuesday morning for your regularly scheduled programming. We'll be right back after this break. Good morning and welcome back. You're, oh, no, yeah. you're getting forecast 72. If only so. people could see what's happening behind the scenes right now. 50s tonight <laughs> as we welcome in the new year. Rain chances next week. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Okay, well, we wanted to thank everyone for joining us through the year. It has been a heck of a year here on 2023, and we know GMSA weekends. We have a special family that we've cultivated over the years. We sure do. And we are excited to see you again in 2024. The reason why we have sounded interesting the last few seconds is because Sarah has turned balloons that are on the desk into dodgeball. But we want to wish you all a Happy and safe New Year's. This is the countdown right now. 15, 15 hours, hours, four minutes and 38 seconds. But yes, if you want to come back on on cam, you can see Sarah juggling the balloons <laughs> and hit Justin in the face with the dodgeball balloon. <laughs> Got fun. him. We're having She's fun very here. aggressive with the balloon. Did you yeah. ever play living room uh, balloon? Like, don't let the balloon touch. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is that what you called it? Up, that's great. I know, we just According called it the Bluey. Bluey. You guys probably don't watch Bluey. Oh, so. I love Bluey. Oh, yes, this is the whole keepy uppy. Why do you watch Bluey? Because I'm. He has young children. I, I well, am a forever child. I have a 12 year old soul. Okay. You know? That works. Interesting. Young All right, so we have 30 <laughs> seconds. Did you decide on a resolution? Okay, so my resolution or mm -hmm. passion this last year was to have more fun. And I had more fun this year. It was a good. fun year. That's good. Okay. Justin? Maybe eat out less. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, that goes with the food and the money things. It's That's both. true. And you, yeah. Max, healthier. Max, don't, yeah. you're, you're not getting out of this. Learn how to sit still more. I always need to be doing something. That is, that's a great resolution for Happy you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year! <laughs>